Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. I'm actually recording this on the 22nd of March. I don't think it will be out till the 29th. I really hope things have got better with this outbreak but by the looks of things it's going to get worse before it gets better but I hope you're all keeping well. I at the moment as I record this I'm absolutely fine. No one in my house is affected by this. Obviously all the pets are doing well. They can't get it anyway but um yeah. We're just sort of on lockdown here. Anyway, I thought I'd do something a little different today. I'd do a QA. and a So I asked over on Instagram what you'd like to know, and this is what you asked. So the first question is, would you ever get an amphibian? I've been very fond of amphibians ever since I was little, when I was raising uh, tadpoles and then turned to frogs. So I've always been mildly obsessed with frogs. I do like uh, dart frogs and red-eyed tree frogs. I also like Neville. Um, Jessica's animal friend's tiger salamander. If you follow her on Instagram, you'll see him a lot. He is so cute. I never knew salamanders had such personalities. Um, but yeah, for me, amphibians are probably more like display animals because though you can hold them, it should really be kept to a minimum. But I wouldn't completely rule them out in the future. I had a similar question regarding whether I'd get a lizard that I couldn't handle, like a day gecko or a morning gecko. I absolutely love day geckos. Like, it... It's hard for me because technically you shouldn't really handle them, but of course I I wouldn't if I, you know because that's best for the lizard. Um, so once again, it'd be more like a display animal. One thing I would find difficult with an animal like that is if I had to take them to the vets because if they get very stressed out with being handled and their skin can tear and all sorts of things, I'd think, how are we going to deal with the vets? One thing I have noticed though is whenever I see them in shops, a lot of the time shops will keep dart frogs and day geckos together or red-eyed tree frogs and day geckos together. I don't know too much about this cohabbing. Like, is that normal? Is that safe? I don't know. Let me know below. Next question. How often do baby geckos shed? So from what I can remember when my geckos were little, I believe it'd be like every four weeks, if not more often. It really depends on their growth rate. So if they, like, I would weigh them every week and you could see how much they were growing and then say they grew quite a lot, they would have to shed. So they definitely shed more frequently than adults. Some will shed every two weeks or every four weeks. It really, as I said, varies on their growth rate. Next, uh, what's better for leopard geckos, earth mix, arid or earth mix? definitely arid it might not seem it when you look at them in the package but actually if you look at their like ingredients shall we say uh earth mix arid is better and kind of designed with leopard geckos in mind will you ever get a snake why or why not i actually did a whole video about this why i probably wouldn't get a snake or a bearded dragon so if you'd like to see that video i will leave the link here and below then we have, how does a shade dweller attach to the top of a wooden vivarium? Um, so I actually did a video when I installed the mini kit into the vivarium. It comes with some screws, just grow it in. I can link that video if you do want to check that out if you want the tutorial. However, if you have the Pro T5 shade dweller, which is a bigger one, um, it does actually come with these metal pieces that you screw into the top of the vivarium and pop the unit in place. I believe... There's probably a Pro T5 video I did for Arcadia that shows all this, so if I can find it, I will link it below. Next, uh, substrate paper towel or reptile carpet for Cresties. So, uh, for me personally, always a safe substrate. Miles better at keeping up humidity and cleaning. Like before I turned my tanks bioactive and used Earth Mix, I originally used Eco Earth. And they have these like tiny springtail like bugs. I don't know exactly what they are, but they used to actually break down all the poop. So even before I had bioactive tanks, it was kind of self-cleaning. Um, but overall, I also feel like substrate makes it look more natural. And then if you use a safe substrate, like I would recommend Earth Mix. I know there are other ones out there. Um, overall, it's pretty safe. As long as you're keeping your crested gecko, you know, well fed, well hydrated, uh, properly heated. Everything should be fine with that. Then we have, how much is your reptile food bill for a month? Ah, that's a good question. Um, so, 
With my Cresta Gecko and Chihua, of course I have like the powdered diets, so, and I do offer them feeder insects, but if we were talking about the powdered diets, they can be a bit pricey, but you buy them once and they last for um, months. So I won't count that in this, we'll look more at just like live feeder insects. So if I'm doing a quick shop, a more regular shop, I get two lots of crickets and some wax worms, that can be around eight to 10 pounds a month. Uh, that will feed four of the geckos, and of course, like if Lyra or Drogo fancy some food in that time, they might get a cricket. Uh, if I'm doing a sort of big shop where I have mealworms, morrow worms, crickets, um, and wax worms, you may you may have seen that unboxing actually. Yeah, I did an unboxing where I had like a massive order, and I think that cost me around 13, 14 pounds. Now that isn't something I'm doing monthly, um, so I would say on average, maximum, I probably pay 10 pounds, which really isn't bad because I swear my guinea pigs cost me so much more. Next is simply next tank review, question uh, mark. That will hopefully be the next upload. I'm gonna be working on that after I've made this video. So make sure you are subscribed, put your notifications on for that one uh, because I'm definitely working on one soon. Then we have what has been the most challenging moment in caring for animals for so long? So, I wouldn't say necessarily the length of time has been an issue for me. Many people uh, find that trying to find someone to care for their animals when they're away can be a bit of a pain. But for me, I haven't been on holiday like abroad for about 11, 12 years. And the last time I stayed away, and this is just at a relative's house for the weekend, not even like a proper holiday, was about eight years ago. Which, you know... <laughs> It's a little bit sad, I guess. I, I don't really take time off. I really enjoy what I'm doing and I'm not great with traveling, but maybe, actually, I was gonna say maybe this year I'll go away a bit more, but we're all in lockdown, so probably not. Um, But for me, that isn't really a massive problem, but it could be for other people. I think the hardest thing about having pets, regardless of how long you look after them, is when you lose them when they pass away. By far, that is the most soul-destroying heartbreaking thing for me um as i mainly work at home i interact with them every single day they're like my babies i've had two guinea pigs pass away due to inoperable tumors and you know when you're going back and forth to the vets doing all you can throwing money their way saying do any test you can do i'll take in any medicine or advice you can offer and ultimately it comes down to the animal dying and i'm just saying look it's got a tumor we can't do anything i mean as much as you try to prepare yourself because you're like, okay, they've got a tumour, they're not going to live long, it, it nothing prepares you. And even when Ruby, my chinchilla, I had her 11 years, she was 11 and a half when she died. And the vets told me, you know, due to her ongoing condition um, that, you know, she would have fits and stuff, they did tell me, you know, she's the equivalent to a 90-year-old human, she's a geriatric patient, she doesn't have long left, but if you saw Ruby, she had so much energy, she was so active until the end, so in my head, I'm like, oh, they're saying this, but look at her, she's so, like, alive, she's so active, um, so when she passed, that crushed me, so, uh, yeah, super happy topic I know but one of the hardest things whether you have an animal for a year or ten losing them is definitely the hardest thing about having pets but uh yeah let's finish on a happier note <laughs> that got quite sad uh last question is how do you come up with the names of your pets they're all awesome well thank you very much for that because sadly I have no particular theme no order or anything like some people would do Harry Potter characters some people would do Disney characters Erin from Erin's Animals chooses names from the periodic table um I have no kind of idea and uh, like lately like the last what the last lizard I got was Drogo oh my god that was like three years ago now and it took me about six months to name him I'm really bad at naming things but um, to quickly run through where I get my ideas from, Gizmo was because of gremlins, Minnie because I named her after her mum, 
Diego is because when I was younger and I saw Ice Age, I really liked the name Diego and I thought it'd work really well for a lizard. So when I finally got a male lizard, I was like, Diego. <laughs> um, then we have Ziggy because at the time I thought she was a boy and I named her after Ziggy Marley and Ziggy Stardust. Uh, Lyra was named after a constellation and Drogo was named after Carl Drogo from Game of Thrones. So it's quite a mix. Um, if you want to know more about each of my geckos, their morphs, how much they were, um, those kind of things, I actually do have a whole video on that so I'll link that here. But yeah, I hope this video has brought a little joy to your day. If you haven't already, please subscribe. At the time of filming this, we're getting very close to 200,000 subscribers, which is amazing because my sister still tells people that I do videos on dirt because once, once I reviewed some substrate, <laughs> I'm like, I do other things, there's bugs and lizards and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this and goodbye.